Guys, amazing job on this film. First, I'm a huge football fan, but I'm so happy that I got to see this story told, and I, and I appreciate it so much. But the first question I have is for Mark and Reginald. Uh, I'm glad the story was told, but how did you find this story? Where did it, how did it come across to you guys? Yeah, I mean, I'll start off at uh, 14 years ago, back in 2006, you know, the story unfolded. Um, and I watched it like a lot of people on TV. It was first on, you know, ESPN before one of the games, uh, kind of a big piece they did. And then it was, he was, you know, on, uh, you know, ABC World News uh, Person of the Week. And then he was on Oprah. So I looked at it. I was like, man, this story is getting real national attention. And it's just because of how beautiful and how emotional it was. It's not about him scoring 10 touchdowns or having interceptions. It's about just what he did and how he stepped up. So those are the elements of a movie. It's never on the field. It's always off the field, you know, for these sports films should never be about the, the sport. Um, but we obviously wanted to get that right. But, but when, you know, I, I ended up getting the rights to the story. I reached out to the, to the school and got in touch with, with Ray and just was try to be honest with him about the process. And, you know, we ended up setting it up at a different studio all those years ago and it just never got made. You know, we always knew we had a great project and was told to be patient. And finally, when uh, Disney plus announced their platform and, you know, I'd done a lot of films at that studio and, uh, you know, uh, when, when I just figured it would be kind of a great fit over there. And they, they agreed and we got the script, worked on the script, brought on in Randy McKinnon and kind of brought in Reggie to direct and, and just kind of this magical little run to the, to the making of the film. That's incredible. Ray, amazing. Man, I love this film. But I got to ask you, what's it like having your story told uh, being shared with the world on Disney Plus? Uh, surreal, surreal. Uh, I told these guys back when, uh, well, Mark at least, um, that when I initially, I told Reggie now, since he, we've discussed it a couple of times, that <clears throat> I thought it was going to be two cameras. Uh, that was it. That was how they was going to shoot the story of my life with two cameras, one wide lens, something to get close as well. Uh, and that was going to be the, the, the it of it, not this major studio production. I could have never imagined that it would be what it is now. And and to be part of Disney family is amazing to be a part of a new platform and to be one of the first biopics on that platform is uh, it's, uh, humbling. Now, Reggie, you are a true pioneer and legend in entertainment. So it's an honor to, to meet everybody. But Reggie, I got to ask, what was it about Jay that he brought to the role of Ray that wasn't necessarily on the page? Sure. Um, uh, Jay had the charm and the charisma. Um, he could go deep, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, you know the, 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 the heavy scenes that had to be played. He was a legit athlete. You know, we, we, you know, after his reading, we took him out in the field. He could run, he could throw, he could catch, he could hit. Um, and, you know, the, the best part when it came to building that relationship, you know, with the actor playing his little brother, he really built that relationship for real. They spent the weekends together, they hung right. out together. So that special magic that you can't fake, you know, he, he you know, that was, that was real. And his dedication to performance at such a young age was incredibly impressive. Ray, can you talk to me about stepping on set for the first time and what it was like to relive some of those moments of your life? Um, me? Stepping yeah. on set for the first time. Uh, they were at football practice, if I'm not mistaken. The first set that I actually got to uh, was outside. Um, because Clemson was not necessarily a set for me. It was just kind of where I lived my life at, but it wasn't necessarily a set. It was Clemson. Right, but right. Going back to actually where, you know, the production, I, I pulled up and there's buses and vans and trailers everywhere. And I'm like, what, what is all this? Like, like I didn't imagine it being all of that to see all of it. Cause even when, in, when it was in Clemson, it was hidden, but, out and we got back to Atlanta, everything was out and all the people that were involved. And I couldn't imagine like all the money that was spent to get all these individuals together. And they came together for me and to, to make my story real. And that was uh, shocking to me and uh, surreal. And uh, I'm blessed to have that experience. 
Now, Mark and Reginald, I want to talk about uh, shooting some of the football scenes in front of real Clemson fans in the SEC. Now, look, I'm a Pac-12 guy, but I know how the SEC is with uh, with football. It is crazy down there. But talk to me because I heard it was shot during halftime, and it's a few plays. It almost sounded like a two-minute drill that you guys had to run through this halftime to get it perfectly right. Can you talk to me about that a little bit? Yeah, take it, Reggie. No, no it, it was a pretty uh, intense experience. I mean, Clemson was incredibly supportive of the film. Uh, and they said, sure, you guys can shoot at halftime. Uh, but, you know, this is the amount of time you have. Let's be clear about this. You're not going to interfere with Clemson football. We totally understood. We got those boundaries. Most times when you shoot a scene like that, you're shooting a play during halftime. We had four separate plays we were going to try to get in that amount, of, in, in half the amount of time. So we rehearsed for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, and we, you know, promoted to the crowd, said, hey, we're, we're shooting a movie scene at halftime. Stay in your seat. Don't, don't get a snack. You know, don't buy a T-shirt. Hang in there for us. They all stayed, 85,000 people. I warned the actors. I said, look, when this crowd cheers, it's going to be in a rush of adrenaline. So you don't, don't get so gassed up with adrenaline that you twist your ankle going down the hill. We don't have time for do-overs. This is one take only. When that crowd roared, it was the third loudest crowd in the history of the stadium. Wow. I started losing it. Oh, my God, what's going on? I, I had to calm myself down to get focused. They run down Death Valley. We're doing the plays. No walkie-talkie, no cell phone. We had to do it with flags. We had to do semaphore, like we're in the, the Navy in the 1700s. The, 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 the cast, the camera operators, everyone kills it. 23 cameras, get it done, seven and a half minutes. Good night. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's, that's wow. I, I, another question I have for you guys is, look, Mark, you've, you've done a, a few sports movies in the past, but what was it? And you talked about this yourself a little bit about, it's about what happens off the field. What made safety stand out to you? Yeah, I just, just the way it moved me when I, when I heard the story, you know, I mean, that's that, that emotion that, you know, you don't feel from a lot of things and, and just watching the two of them, the real Ray and Faye, when, when the story happened, it just melted me, you know? So I felt like if we could capture some of that and, and really dig below what's what what you see in this little you know three four minute clip that they would put together uh i just felt like there could be a great movie inside there and there was you know and uh and you know it all it, it's about finding the right writers and, and just getting that screenplay right and and having it feel fresh and right. and never trying to feel like you're repeating yourself when you're making stories especially in the sports world you know you're, you're going to have similar kind of endings it's underdog stories you know this wasn't about beating a team or an interception or winning it was about you know, him getting his brother and, and, and being able to be a student athlete as well as a father and a brother. So all these great elements that, that, that I'd never seen before. And then, you know, the films deals with diversity and, you know, the stories weren't told before and now they're being told and it's kind of great time in, in filmmaking right now in, in cinema. It's incredible. Now I want to switch gears for a second. And Reginald, I have to ask you, I've been dying to ask you, look, I'm a huge fan of you and Christopher Priest and that run on Black Panther. I know you co-created Shiri. She's a, I'm a huge fan of Shiri. Um, where would you like I, to see that? Yes, you go, keep going, yes. Where would you like to see that character go next cinematically? Well, um, it's not up to me. There's amazing filmmakers, you know, uh, obviously Brian Coogler is a great filmmaker. You know, Kevin Feige and the team at Marvel, they're super smart. I was really impressed when I saw Shiri on screen because that's exactly how she was written. And to see her come to life, I was like, wow, I, I've never had a creation of mine, you know, uh, taken by someone else, but they nail it 100%. So, you know, in the comic book, she became uh, the Black Panther. Um, what they do, I don't know, but I'm sure whatever it's going to be, it's going to be great. I can't wait to see. I'll be there with my popcorn, chewing them on. So will I. And I hope everybody's there with their popcorn at home watching this one because it's fantastic. So, guys, thank you so much for your time. It's such a such a great story. And I, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Take care, appreciate guys. It.